Hello viewers, this is attorney Nuresh Gayi and welcome to the show. And it's a beautiful evening and it's 6.30 in the evening. As you all rightly know, Green Card with Gayi is live. So we are going to discuss about some very important issues today. First, we are going to hit the headlines a little bit as to what's happening in the world of immigration. A lot of issues going on in immigration and uh, a lot of restrictionist movements coming up uh, in terms of the anti-immigrant agenda. And uh, the sad thing is that uh, we've seen people who are suffering, uh, people are getting laid off from the jobs, especially H-1Bs are having a big problem. So today we're going to just shoot some headlines as to some options that H-1B visa holders may have during these difficult times. Now, one tip which I would like to share with my H-1B visa holders is that if you have an I-140 approved, we've been helping people to try to apply for their work permits if the I-140 has been approved under the extreme hardship issues, and that will be taken into consideration on a case-by-case -case basis. So that's one you know, glimmer of hope that uh, people may have who are under the H-1B visa program. And secondly, as I said, you know, uh, if you have your spouse who's on an H-1B, and if you have lost your job, it would be much better for you to come in and uh, I would say like kind of, you know, get involved and ensure that uh, you get in on the H-4 program and, you know, work with your spouse. I think that's one of the options that I would strongly recommend you at this point of time. And uh, besides that, if you're on a student visa, don't worry too much, continue as a student until things change in the country. And that's going to help a lot, I believe. So these are some of the issues that uh, we'll be discussing about. And we have quite a few viewers here today. And, uh, you know, feel free to ask us questions. If we can help you with anything, the show is live. So feel free to join into the show to ask your questions like last time. And this is a live webinar on Zoom. And, uh, you know, if you have another viewer, so if you have any questions, you can ask us after I finish the topic for today. So we'll be opening the floor up after a few minutes and uh, the way this uh, particular webinar works. So first we'll be discussing the topic for the day, which is going to be fiancé visas and spouse visas. So as far as fiancé visas are concerned, it's critically important that, uh, you know, we need to let people know about what is the fiancé visa all about. And uh, we have a technical peer team working with us over here. So they're monitoring the show to see if we have technical issues. Thank you, I mean, for being on the show. Thank you, Dan, for being on the show to assist us with a lot of questions that we are going to get from our viewers too. So uh, I would request everyone to look into the camera so that exactly we have focus and uh, we conduct uh, uh, something that's very good for everyone today. So number one, as I said, press the link which is in front of you right now. And if you have questions, you can talk to us live. The link is right in front of you, staring in front of you on your Facebook screen. If you want to talk to us, we'll be live. So I know that uh, things can be challenging with technology, but that's what we are giving you. Now let's get to fiance visa and spouse visa. Getting a lot of questions from people who are here and some of them here are here on a visitor's visa and they have fallen in love. And some of them have fallen in love with green card holders in the US. Some of them have fallen in love with American citizens. And uh, some of them are calling me and telling me, Mr. Gay, my visa is about to expire. And I'm in love with a member of the same sex. Mr. Gay, I'm in love with a member of the opposite sex. Mr. Gay, I'm in love with a green card holder. Can I apply for my green card? The answer is yes. You may be able to apply right away. The good news is that even if you are planning on getting married to a green card holder, you can immediately be eligible for adjustment of status depending which country you belong to and whatnot. So there is light at the end of the tunnel if you are looking at even getting married to a green card holder. Same-sex marriages are recognized under the laws of the United States of America because DOMA was repealed. DOMA means Defense of Marriage Act was repealed. So the good thing is that you can marry a member of the same sex and you may qualify for a green card in America. Take an example about someone who comes in uh, to this country from Africa or from the United King Kingdom on a B2 visa, on a visitor's visa, or from Guyana, from Trinidad, from India or Pakistan or any of these countries. And the person is here on a visit visa now and he's worried that his visa is expiring. What's the first thing he needs to do? First thing is to not become illegal. 
do not become undocumented because once if you become undocumented or if you become illegal or if you overstay your visa the problem starts from there first thing to do is if you are on a b2 visa extend your stay change your status remain legal because there may be light at the end of the tunnel for you now take an example you came here and your six months is coming up first thing is think about the word extension well my lawyer told me that he's going to apply for asylum after one year but your lawyer is not telling you one thing very clearly that after six months you may become illegal you may become out of status in the country your status will be violated under section 212 of the immigration and nationality act so you have to be careful and it's your duty to stay legal in the country so now if you're on a visitor visa well and good apply for extension by some time because of covid you may be able to get your six months and figure something out and keep talking to your lawyer and uh, you know you'll have some light at the end of the tunnel another thing that you can do over here is that you know apply for asylum if you have horrible country conditions if you're from syria if you're from pakistan or if you're from any of these countries where you fear persecution then i think you need to consider a political asylum and we've been helping a lot of people with asylum cases from all over the united states now talking about you know getting married to an american citizen what happens you get married to an american citizen after 4 to 5 months you are going to have your interview and if your interview doesn't come in then you may be called you may be getting your work permit or you'll be called for an interview after some time but then they're going to check the bona fides of the marriage bona fides of the marriage means they want to check that you married this particular person with an intent to live your life and not with an intent to circumvent the immigration laws of the united states of america couple gets married what happens next they see a lawyer to apply for the paperwork and when you go to very well at the interview the good news is that the officer is going to give you a conditional green card now very often people ask me what's a conditional green card it's a two year green card if your marriage is less than two years if you're married for more than two years you'll get a 10 year green card and that's how you move on now sometimes you're getting getting married to someone abroad and now some common questions which i get is that i'm planning on marrying someone in india and the problem is that i cannot get married there particularly because i'm marrying a member of the same sex i know that's a problem get involved with the law firm because those cases are looked upon under the microscope so therefore it's good for you to discuss with an immigration attorney regarding your marriage based immigration now getting back to an h1b visa holder here does an h1b visa holder in this country and now what happens to this h1b visa holder is that his company is asking him to take a severance agreement a severance means please leave and so that we can work out things and now this person is dating someone who's a green card holder what should he do now within the 60 day period i'm going to repeat within the 60 day period there's a lot you can do and we are helping people who are nervous and uh, they are saying that well nothing much can be done absolutely not true you can just put your best foot forward and do your best one of my favorite saying is fortune favors the brave when the great get going the going gets great and if you are going to be nervous and you are in this position that you are a software engineer or if you're an architect employed under the H1B visa, visa category, or if you are an, you know, uh, someone else who's under this category, make sure that, you know, keep, try to keep yourself legal. Do not overstay your visa because you're very talented. And remember, this is just a temporary phase of life. And as Rousseau rightly said, this too shall pass away. Have hope, work with a lawyer that you're comfortable with, and make sure that you do not violate your status that is very 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 important for us now other than that as a h1b visa holder you can as i said you know try to get into another status some people on h1b visas are absolutely brilliant consider the o visa 
O as in orange. So, uh, you know, I would ju just thank you so much, Banmati Gulab, and uh, thank you for joining in. And you'll be asking your questions very soon. As I said, we'll be opening the floor for questions at uh, 6.45. So I I'm going to give you all, you know, a chance to ask your questions. So at 6.45, I'll start the questions. So now we're dealing with exactly the situation where we have this h one visa holder, and he's absolutely brilliant. Think about the O visa, and you can self-sponsor yourself for the O visa. Consult a qualified attorney. You'll find a way out on that. Now, another question that asked that got asked to me from a Canadian citizen. And he said, Mr. Gay, the thing is that I'm on a TN visa and I was born in Canada. He said, I was born in Canada. I'm on a TN visa and I'm worried. What should I do? Pretty simple. If you have money, you can even start your own business. <laughs> Think about the E2 visa. As I said, better work with a lawyer. And as I said, look into an investor's visa. Invest it and change it. A problem is an opportunity for people. And people who think about COVID, yes, it is bad. But there are a few entrepreneurs who will be watching the show today. And they're going to be the superstars of tomorrow because they looked upon this problem as an opportunity. As I said, always, when the great get going, the going gets great. And fortune favors the brave. And it takes a little more to be a champion. And you are the champion who's watching the show today. And if you're going to look and, you, you look and think about, you know, something bad is going to happen, of course. Good things happen to people, you know, think about the good of life. And uh, life is topsy-turvy. So therefore, we all need to understand that we all will have good days and bad days, but end of the day, keep working towards your goal. Now, a question that came up about marriage-based immigration, since today's show was about marriage-based immigration, so we're going to focus on marriage-based immigration here. Marriage-based immigration, someone told me about a question that they went for an interview. They went for this interview and uh, they prepared by themselves. They had some consultant fill out their paperwork, which I never recommend go with a good attorney at law, and you can choose a lawyer of your choice. Then after they went for the interview, the officer separated both of them. And one of them had to sign that they have married this person with the intent of getting the green card. You are in serious trouble, straight off the bat. You are in big trouble with the law. So therefore, do not take your immigration hearing lightly. Uh, there was someone who told me that I am happily married. And uh, then he went up to the immigration officer and told him, don't you see I'm happily married? You know what the officer told him? So it doesn't matter if you're happily married, but the burden of proof is upon you to show me that exactly that you are not marrying this particular person with an intent to circumvent the immigration laws of the United States. But if I feel that you are trying to circumvent the immigration laws of the United States that I am going to make a recommendation, or I'm going to give you a decision under section 204 of the act uh, that you are engaging in marriage fraud and you will not be allowed to get your green card in America under this category. That's how the law works. The burden of proof in a fiance visa or in a marriage-based immigration case is upon you to show by clear and convincing evidence that you are marrying this person with the intent of establishing a relationship with your spouse. And after two more minutes, we are going to open the floor for questions. And you can, if you're on Facebook, after two minutes, the questions are going to start. So keep watching, continue watching on Facebook because the current show is live. Now, a few other things which I'd like to mention to our viewers is we are getting some questions from Canada, some beautiful questions from Canada. And there was a question from Canada about a person who owns a company in Canada, and he regularly does business in America. Regularly does business in America. And he's doing a lot of trade. Trade means, you know, buying and selling goods in America. And, you know, he travels, for example, if you're into a trucking company, you're supplying goods, you're coming back. Now, this person said that he wants to start an office in America, and he wants his children to live here. What can I do? Consider the e-visa. It's really easy, folks. 
for me to help you with the e visa category e comes in specially for a limited number of countries including pakistan including uh, canada this is e visa country list and if you belong to the e visa category fantastic for you good news is that you can establish your business in america and there are two types of e visas one is the e1 visa and second is the e2 visa e1 means that you are engaging in trade in the united states you don't even have to show a big investment you just have to show that you're dealing with services in america you're engaging in trade and the second thing is the e2 e2 which means that you want to invest some money in america you don't need a sponsor in the e1 category and in the e2 category what you can do you're going to invest in your business and you can grow your business and you can live in america so there are options now e visas apply applies to many countries applies to the uk applies to pakistan applies to trinidad and a host of countries so if you have money and if you want to settle in america think about the e visa and you can contact me and people have been asking me what's the best way to get in touch with me very simple info at gehilaw.com i n f o at gehilaw.com or a number is 718 263 Five nine nine nine, and an initial personal consultation is free. And we've been taking a lot of calls to help period people during this COVID time. So you can even call us, and I'll be happy to speak to you. So let's open up the floor for questions. And if you have any questions, you can even type us, type it for us, or we can start asking the question and answers. And uh, you can we open the floor for questions right now. So any questions over here, Banmati? Any questions? Hello. I mean, do you have any questions here? No, I don't have any question based on that as yet. Very good. So, thank you so much for watching the show. If you have any questions, we've opened up the floor, and if there are other viewers, and if you have any questions, the floor is now open for questions and answers. And uh, Ishan, how are you? Essen. So we have Asan over here, and if you have any questions, you can ask us. If there are other people watching the show live, we have opened up the floor for questions. Yeah, hello. Yes, Asan. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for your for the information you have given, and uh, we are aware of this even and into we were planning actually, and uh, I'm just uh, trying to find out uh, the investment categories, uh, how much we have to carry, how much. So, which country are you from? I'm from India. Basically, I'm right now in Saudi Arabia working. But uh, see, I'm but Indian the Russia. problem in Saudi Arabia is that if you're born in India, the E visa does not apply to India, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because E visa has a specific list, and you can go to the Department of State website, and uh, even you know, India is unfortunately not a country that is included under the E visa program. Mm -hmm. So, so what are the yeah, other options yeah. for me to uh... actually a couple of things you can do is that you can immigrate to a country and uh, there are some countries that provide you with a direct citizenship that's one and then after that you can qualify for the e visa or secondly mm -hmm. what kind of work do you do so actually i'm in it uh, sector um, you have your own I'm... company no no actually uh, i uh, i was having my own company but now i'm working so my company was closed down Uh, okay. Due to some financial uh, crisis uh, in the past uh, five years before, so okay. now I'm trying to uh, re-establish that uh, my company. But uh, I want to invest in. Uh, so by the way, so the good thing is that if your company is not dissolved, you can reopen that company mm -hmm. and try to work harder. And if we keep that company reopened, then later on we can help you with the L1 visa. But you'll have to show that you have enough people working. So do not rush the game. Mm -hmm. Take your time, and after that, what do you need to do? Is that once if you come to that point that your company is doing well, email me at info at gaylaw dot com. Then we'll be able to do something for you. Or the other okay. thing you need to do, come to America on a visa test visa, so we can talk a little bit more. But right oh. now, I think that would be a better bet for you. Okay. Or Thank unless you and until if you have nine hundred thousand dollars, and if you want to invest it, that's a different thing. So, 
uh, how about if I am having uh, seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars to invest? You cannot do anything because unfortunately you're born in India, and uh, uh -huh. e, e visas don't That's apply to not, India. So it does not apply. You know, I like right. to give honest, straight advice. Unlike some people who will tell you, okay, let me do my research. I don't do all that. Mm -hmm. I'll be straight out the bat. And I think I would, if I were you, Ishan, I would SN, right? Yeah, SN. SN, yeah. What I would do is that I would grow my company and then look into the LBSA category. And feel free, feel free to come and visit me in New York when you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So uh, that was a great question from SN. And now let's talk about this issue. And if someone has questions, we are on. And please ask us questions. So, Jay, Hello, Muzu. what is the... Uh, this is, I mean, what is the timeline for the fancy visa? Like, usually, how much time it will All right, take? so the fancy visa is taking approximately, you're looking at around eight or nine months right now. Nine months on an average for the fiancé visa. And, uh, you know, when people come in on a fiancé visa, they have to get married within 90 days and they have to apply for the green card for the spouse, yes. So it's around nine months is the approximate amount of time. Regardless of any country or uh, there's a specific country they can have immediate expired process? Uh, most of the time you're looking at it's nine months. Sometimes that can go up to 12 months. And uh, the average is between nine to 12 months for sure, yes. But I'm sure that the timings are going to change. It's going to be a lot more after COVID because nobody knows what is the staffing, uh, what kind of staffing is going to be kind of, you know, uh, immigration is going to be having after COVID. So that's something that we anticipate that the timelines will go up a bit. Any more questions from our viewers? So let me continue with some more questions and answers. So one of them was that I'm a Canadian citizen and I want to start my company in America and I'm doing a lot of business with America. Consider the e-visa and we'd be happy to help you with that. Uh, I'm a professional from Canada and I work in the US, what can you consider? The TN visa. H1B is limited to a quota, but TN can help you a lot more than that. So that's good for Canadians. Now, other than that, the other question was that I'm here on a B2 visa to visa. My visa is about to expire. What should I do? Extend your visa. Please do not expect immigration to just let you know what to do. It's your job to keep yourself intact and stay legal in the United States of America. So right now, that's important for you that you stay legal and make sure that you're in good standing in the country. Another question was from someone who said that I cannot go back to my country because things are really bad. What should you do? Consider political asylum. And we've, had, we've been handling cases from all over the United States. And uh, you know we've been getting a lot of, a lot of cases wherein people are applying for asylum. So the question was that what happens after I file for my asylum? After you apply for your asylum, then after 150 days from the receipt of your asylum application, you can apply for your work permit. So you, you can get a work permit. Then after that, if you win your case, you may also qualify for a green card under section 208 of the Immigration and Nationality Act. The next question was from a viewer who said that I have a relative was detained, was currently in immigration jail. What should I do? Keep trying for bond. That's the best thing you can ever do. Keep trying for bond or for parole. And one day, if you, you get a good officer and if the field district director feels that uh, they can uh, you know, consider definitely a, a bond or a parole for the person. Now there's a, a question from Rafia to everyone. Can Rafia, can you come online? Yes, Rafia, please ask us your question. Okay, Brambati, after Rafia speaks, then you can also ask your question. Uh, come online and ask us your question now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Rafia, I can hear you. Yeah, yes, hi. please ask your question. Um, my question was, can being on H1B, can we apply for asylum? Yes, you can. Absolutely. And we've done cases like this. And I think that's a great option for you if you're in a situation. And uh, of course, like there's this uh, 
common concept conception that one has to apply for asylum within one year. But if we can show extraordinary circumstances, you can definitely apply for asylum. Okay, I have one more question. Please. Yeah, I am. Uh, I was actually on H one B, but I changed my visa to H four. Okay. So can I again go from H four to H one B? Sure, you can. Gets, does it? Uh, as far as you have time remaining on your H one, I don't see that to be a problem. I only had one year of H one B the last. So you have five more years I, left. Uh, I didn't apply for an extension then. Can I do it now? Yes, of course you can because as far as you have not violated your status, you're fine. Okay. And okay. you can call Thank me you, tomorrow so because right now I'm on the show. You can call me okay. tomorrow. I should be available at around uh, in the afternoon for sure. So ask okay. my assistant so I can okay. discuss a lot more with you. All right. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Have a great evening. And uh, there was a question from Banmati, I believe. Yes, Banmati. What's your question? Hello? Banmati, unmute yourself or turn on your, your voice. Yes, hello? Yes, now I can hear you. Yes, sorry about that. Actually, I have a complicated case. Um, I have cases with you guys recently, but what happened is that my husband is trying to, has, to um, get his, his citizenship, but he's getting problem, difficulty in reading. Okay, Banmati, reading. can you do me a favor? Can you call me tomorrow? Okay. Call me tomorrow and speak to Kimberly, whom I want to talk to. Okay, okay. Your, is your family okay? Are you, is your health all right, Banmati? Always wonderful hearing from you. Yes, I already, I already spoken to them, yes. So uh, let's talk that. tomorrow, Banmati. Make sure that you get in touch with Kimberly right away and I'll be happy to help you. Okay, Good to you see that much. you're doing well, your, your family is okay and you know you're doing well. That's very important. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, but um, another thing I enjoy so far, I enjoy it. Um, yeah, everything went so well so far. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to know that. I'm glad you're telling yes. the viewers. Yeah, the case I appreciate is, it. Yeah. Thank yes, you so much. Yes. Yeah. And if there's any other viewer who has any questions, uh, this is a live show. And uh, again, you can ask me any questions about immigration, right from employment-based immigration to family-based immigration matters, right up to deportations. We'd be happy to kind of answer more questions for our viewers. And remember, so it's 657, very important. Keep sharing this link amongst your friends. As you can see, we are answering questions live. This is great news for all of you. And you can start kind of asking us questions here. We'll be happy to answer you and, uh, you know, and let you know what you can do in your situation. And every Wednesday and every Monday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be having the show. And uh, you know, there's so much that we're going to do on the show. We're going to talk about L1 visas. We're going to talk about E2 visas. We're going to talk about E1 visas. We're going to talk about H1Bs. We're going to talk about O visas. We're going to talk about entertainers and performers. And we are going to talk about B1 visas, B2 visas, as well as political asylums, deportations, and above all, there's one important thing which is very special to the show. We're going to talk about immigration litigation, which means we get calls on the show that my immigration case has been stuck up for years. So we're going to educate our viewers about what are rights in taking these cases to federal court, which means sometimes your case is stuck in immigration, not because of your fault, because of immigration's fault. So in those situations, we are going to make sure that we take it to federal court. Uh, it's BZ online. BZ, do you have a question, Benoit? Uh, yes, Mr. Gehi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Benoit. Yeah, I walked into your office about eight years ago with a friend of mine. She had an issue with an abusive spouse. She uh -huh. now has a green card. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you so much, Benoit, for all your, for your wonderful comments. And I still remember you vaguely. And it's always yes. a pleasure hearing from you, Benoit. Thank you. How's your family doing? Is everything okay with you? Uh, everything's okay. I had a question of my own. Um, sure, so please, I'm on an H-1B visa. Yes, uh, and uh, right now, uh, my spouse and I, my uh, fiance and I uh, have put off the marriage. Uh, Congratulations. Because of the COVID-19, COVID we, we didn't get married. We actually put it off. Okay, uh, can you speak a little louder? 
Uh, yes. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, it's much better now. Yes. Okay. Uh, so my fiance and I uh, put off our marriage, uh, you know, indefinitely because of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, but, you know, we're getting a little, you know, uh, edgy because uh, I don't want to go back to India and complicate things. My visa's coming to an end. Um, I'd like to get married. But also, we're weighing our options. I'm not sure if the USCIS is even doing adjustment of status at the moment, Mr. Gates. Okay, so what That's is your legal status, status right now? Uh, H-1B. So, how, is she an American citizen, the person that you're going to marry? That's right. She's an American, yeah. We've been together okay, for If you marry her, then there's no problem at all. Okay, we can, can help I you with that. Can I apply right now? Huh? Can I apply right now? I, I heard the USCIS is in a shutdown and whatnot. You need to start preparing right away. Just call me tomorrow if you want, or you know, email me. Actually, sure. email me because I know you. Info at gaylaw.com. Just send yes, me a number sir. and I'll help you out. Yes, Mr. Gay, I'll do that. Thank you. Uh, but Thank I'm you. very happy to hear the good news. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. doing fine. Thank you. Good to know that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gay. So, so, folks, as you all can see, that uh, people have started asking questions. And there's one thing I'd like to say that Naresh Gayi can do his best on every case. I cannot win every case, particularly because nobody can win every single case. And any lawyer who tells you, yes, I guarantee you I can win your case, that's not a good thing to do in the profession. Like we all have to do our best. And uh, you know, one more question from Essen. Uh, Essen, yes, your question, please. Yes, Essen. Yeah, Mr. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, one more question is that if I come on a B1, B2 visa, uh, is it possible to uh, uh, convert to H1B? Yes, you can. If you find a sponsor, you can look at an H1B. If you have problems in the country, going back, uh, there may be other possibilities depending on your situation. So, you know, I think the first thing is to just try to make a trip and come to America. So usually, H1B process starts uh, in uh, end of March or maybe first of first week of April. 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 That is correct. So uh, if I come on B1, B2 and uh, apply in any month or should I uh, have to wait for that month? Uh, you, the, the, by the time, like H1B is effective in October, but in between there's a lottery system and if you get selected, you'll know right away. Within a month or so, you'll know. Mm -hmm. So in May, April or May, you'll know exactly whether you got selected or not. Okay. Okay. All right. And yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. So folks, thank you so much for the show. The instant program is a, an, an attorney advertisement. The advice given on the show is general in nature and does not apply to any specific circumstance unless and until there is an agreement, a written agreement with the attorney. And uh, we handle immigration cases from all over the United States and the world. And uh, share this video. And it's so easy. Just click on Zoom next time, like how people are asking questions. And even if you're anywhere in Canada, or anywhere in the world. And if you want to immigrate to America, if you have questions, you should join the show. And we'll be back again on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., same time, same place. And I need to thank two wonderful people. That's Amin, as well as Dan, for doing a fabulous job. I thank you all very much. And keep yourself locked on on Zoom again this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Green Card with Gehi. And if you have questions, info at gehilaw.com or 718-263-5999 for a free initial personal consultation. Thank you, folks.